Well, we'll give everybody another minute and then we will get started. Hey, Mike, thank you for sharing the Jedi. Um, oh, no, no problem at all. Uh, you know, just keep every month, send me the, the flyer and I'll get it out. Yeah, not a problem. Thank you. Yep. Well, the clock on the computer says 1215, so why don't we get started? I'm going to call this meeting to order. Uh, welcome to Cedar Boy Rotary, the best Rotary Club in the universe. Uh, if everybody please rise uh, and bow your heads. Chris Johnston has the invocation for us. Thanks, Mike. I have a Rotary blessing for all. Bless our hands that generously devote themselves to helping others. Grant them courage when they are afraid wisdom when they must make decisions, strength when they are weary, and compassion in all their work. Amen. Amen. Join me in the flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And the four-way test. Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concern? We'll build goodwill and better friendships, and will it be beneficial to all concerned? Go ahead and have a seat. I believe Miss Pola has a reading or a song or something for us here. Uh, not a song. I'm not a singer, but I do have uh, some quotes. Just a second here. Let me bring them up for me. Um, I just had it. Give me one minute here. Here it is. Okay. So these were just some of my favorite quotes that I thought were appropriate to Rotary and our goals. And the first one is from Gandhi. The best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. The second one is from Martin Luther King. Life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are you doing for others? And, the sec and this one is also Martin Luther King. The time is always right to do what is right. Um, next, I have the moment we decide to fulfill something, we can do anything. Greta Thunberg at the House of Parliament. In a general, the next one is Gandhi. In a gentle way, you can shake the world. And finally, I'm going to end with, because when this ends, we'll smile sweetly, finally seeing in testing times, we came, became the best of things. Amanda Gorman. And that's all I have. Great. Thank you, Paula. Uh, do we have any Visiting Rotarian. Well, I know we have one visiting Rotarian, uh, Miss Christina Trader from the Marysville Club, and we'll call on her a little bit later to tell her about the auction and what's going on over at the Boys and Girls Club. I don't see any other visitors. Speak up if I'm missing somebody, but I don't see anybody. So welcome, Christina. Uh, Thank you. On the club business, this meeting is going to probably be shorter than normal because our speaker uh, bailed this morning and really didn't have time to do anything else. So I, I had some emergency and just couldn't get on the call. I'm going to, uh, I don't know, tell me what you think. I was thinking about going on and doing just a short tutorial on Club Runner uh, showing, because I know there's a lot of people they probably don't know how to use the email functions of Club Runner. They don't know how to get out there and, and take advantage of everything. So I was just going to walk through that real quick and share a couple of videos if nobody has objections. So you can stay on if you uh, feel you could use it or get off, I guess. 
Uh, the Rotary Foundation Weekly Moment. Last week we talked about what $500 can do. Uh, this week we're going to talk about what a $1,000 contribution to the Rotary Foundation can do. Your $1,000 contribution to the Rotary Foundation can help provide all materials necessary for the construction of a deep bore well in India, which supplies clean drinking water to more than 300 people, or materials to, tr to pr treat and prevent parasites and anemia for children in Uruguana, Brazil, or purchase a tree nursery in Jamaica that will annually produce 5,000 tree seedlings and increase family income for 700 farmers, or provide artificial limbs to 25 disabled persons in Calcutta, India, or it could buy kitchen equipment for an orphanage in Peru, or provide a cow and animal husbandry training to a widow in Uganda where civil war shattered the economy and children died because of the lack of protein and calcium in their diets or buy polio vaccines for 2,000 babies in Nicaragua, or excuse me, Nigeria, or fund enough textbooks to educate 2,000 children in a school in Papua New Guinea, or provide 20 $50 microloans enabling women in Nicaragua to start a craft business to support their families. As you can see, you can have a lasting impact in so many ways with your contributions to the Rotary Foundation. Just shows you how good the Rotary Foundation is in leveraging their money. Uh, district conference, uh, 55th for the 5050 district will be May 14th and 15th. It's going to be virtual. Uh, at this time, I'd like to uh, introduce our assistant district governor, Becky Eldy, who has a couple of things to say. Thank you, President Mike. I would like to encourage all of you to attend the district conference May 14th, 15th, and 16th. It's going to be virtual, so it's going to be a little bit easier to attend. It was supposed to be in Canada this year, and we were going to have a tour of a brewery and have a fun golf tournament and a lot of fun things, but I think they're going to make it fun, even though it's virtual. And um, Mike, did you have that video? Because I'm not sure I, I can play it from I here, do. but me... Mike has a great little video to show you and it'll tell you a little bit more about the district conference. Okay, let me pull it up here. I'm Carol Tickleman, and I'm very honored to serve as your district governor this Rotary year. I'm also very excited to invite you to join us for the first ever virtual district conference for District 5050. To me, a district conference means meeting Rotary. Meeting Rotary from every angle, the people, what it does, where it influences, the opportunities that it has. We have a great lineup of speakers who will inform, inspire, challenge, and entertain you. I'm forever grateful for this opportunity to work with Indigenous Australians, to hear their stories of trauma, and to work alongside them towards healing. You know, many people are experiencing culture loss, and that becomes that comes from the invisibility Dallas was talking about. We still are being resilient and we get welcomed to these spaces as a part of that reconciliation and decolonization process. We also will be celebrating the many incredible successes of this Rotary Year. We want to allow clubs to promote or feature projects from this Rotary Year in the virtual House of Friendship. This is your first and possibly only opportunity to attend a district conference at no cost to you, thanks to our generous sponsors. I am inviting all Rotarians in District 5050 to attend the virtual district conference. Come and listen to the great speakers. Come and listen to the voice of Rotary. The voice of those who stand next to you in your clubs. The voice of those beyond your clubs. And really understand the power of Rotary. So mark your calendars for May 14th and 15th and make sure to register on the District 5050 website. Thank you, stay well, and see you in May if not before.
Okay, let's see if I can get back to my main screen here. There we go. Okay, everybody saw that? You got something else you want to continue on that, Becky? <laughs> no, but thank you, Mike, and uh, just want to encourage everybody to do that. And all you have to do is go on the District 5050 website to sign up. It's free and it's very good. Okay, and one, one note, uh, you must register separately for each day. You must register for Friday and you must register for Saturday. So, and, and like Becky says, I encourage you to go out there. It, it should be a good time. Um, please yeah. register. Mike, the, if, if nothing else, catch Dean Roar's talk. Mm -hmm. Dean Roar's is, is a super Rotarian squared, and I'm sure she'll have something good to say. She will. Good. Okay, moving on. Uh, auction. Is Tim Hallen on the call? Rich? I haven't seen him. Hey, he Rich, do you want to say anything about the auction right now? You're muted, Rich. Can't hear you. It's on July 31st, and I think Tim's moving along well. Uh, we need to get some live items in. Uh, we're doing pretty well, and I think we'll be have those in place here in the next three or four weeks at the most. So I'll, that's uh, all I have to say about the auction. I would like to say, and I assume and I hope you all got the survey that Phil and I sent out about Rotary uh, this morning with a letter. Uh, we're just looking for input, see if anybody wants to make any changes or have some suggestions to make the club better. It looked like, it, it felt like a good time to maybe take a look, see at what we have been doing and so on and so forth, having come through this COVID period. And uh, so really encourage and really want to get the feedback from everyone. And when I say everyone, I mean everyone, uh, good or bad. Uh, and always looking for suggestions and criticisms. And Phil and I'll look at it because we're the new next two president elects and hopefully it'll help us and then perhaps whoever's behind us. So please get those and send them back in. Okay, thanks Rich. Uh, Brock Stiles, Kyle Rutherford, you guys want to talk about the foot race? Sure. So how's everybody doing okay? A lot of good faces there. So uh, Kyle the other day emailed me about uh, the great Cedar Woolley foot race. So uh, all the newer members here, I see there's a few on the, on the Zoom conference here, is uh, every rotary year that starts on July the 1st, and goes to June 31st. The very first event that Rotary does is the great Cedar Woolley foot race on July the 4th. We've done this forever. I think uh, 1978, I believe, was the first year it was put on. And um, Rotary has always been involved in it for traffic control and registration and just about everything to do with organizing the foot race. Um, of course, Kyle Rutherford is the one that actually makes it happen. And I'm gonna turn this over to him in just a little bit. But so the question that we wanna get input from club members is whether to do the foot race this year based on the circumstances. Last year we did it uh, virtually, but um, you know, Kyle has uh, stepped up and says that he's willing to, to help organize this, but we, we would still need uh, Rotarians to be on street corners, even though there might not be a parade that day. If we do the foot race, that's just for safety purposes. And we'd also need help at the start finish line. But Kyle's got a lot of good ideas on how to um, take precautions uh, with this. And I'll let him uh, kind of explain kind of what he has in mind and then we'll uh, get anybody's input. Okay, Kyle, take it away. Yeah, thanks, Brock. Um, sorry, my puppy just came in the door. Um, uh, yeah, so there, the Tulip Festival um, ran a, Calvin, <laughs> that's my dog, one of my dogs. Um, uh, the, the Tulip Festival ran, ran an actual race this year, so we know it can be done. Um, we would have to switch to chip timing, which I think we can do. 
um, have appropriate spacing of the, the runners. And, you know, there's a lot, I have, I have a list of um, changes that would make it so that it's, it stays safe. But I think we can still pull it off. And um, basically, I think it's a, a really good um, community event that uh, would be, I think it's the 44th annual. So we've been running it 43 years. Uh, last year, like uh, Brock said, it was uh, virtual. But it's um, with enough people that have vaccines and that sort of thing, I think we can actually pull it off and it'd be kind of a fun um, fun event. Uh, the Tulip Festival ran with, or the Tulip Race ran with about 50% of their normal. So we don't have high expectations that we'd have really high numbers like we've had in the past. But even if we run 300, we'll stagger the start times. We'll um, try to do a left lane and right lane kind of approach to it so they everybody stays separated. And with that, um, uh, I think we can bring in a little bit of money for, for scholarships, especially if we do sponsors. Um, we'll do the t-shirts like normal. Um, uh, probably cut down on the, the pre-order size would not be the same. Um, but for those that haven't seen it before, we ran about 600 to 700 runners typically um, in years past. Um, so if we hit 300 runners, I think it'd be fantastic for, for the community. Um, we'd have to make some changes at registration. I think we would probably drop, and Brock, need to talk to you about this, but I'd probably drop the um, the prizes at the end because we don't want people to congregate at the end. So it's going to be kind of, you know, you'll run, you'll finish going through the, the shoot at the end, um, and then we'll post all the times online. So that it's rather than, uh, you know, in the field there like we usually do. But um, with those changes, I think we can make it safe. Um, uh, it's, it's kind of a fun event for people to start getting back together. So I wanted to get, to, but um, it does take a commitment from, from the Rotarians to be able to guide the traffic and that sort of thing and help us at both finish line and the start for registration. Um, and I don't think a lot of you are traveling to Europe this year. So I think we'd probably save there. Um, sorry, that was mean. Um, and, uh, Anyway, so I wanted to get, I wanted to see if, if people were interested in doing that. Uh, the registration stuff, we'll get that. Um, it has not been turned on yet right now. So um, I, I don't want to overcommit the club until we've made a decision. So um, is that, Brock, fill us in on the rest kind of thing. Did I miss anything? Well, no, I mean, just, just so, uh, again, everybody knows there's a five mile race and there's a two mile race. And so we're, we, I think we should be able to stagger out smaller numbers of people. Uh, you know, one of the best things of the, of the foot race is when you're at the start uh, line, when you have 700 people all packed together at the, and we got the black powdered rifle blow off and, and uh, rattle all the windows in the area. We'll only probably do that once, but you know we could probably do it every every time somebody gets up there, every group. But you know, <laughs> but um, scare the neighborhood. Yeah, that'd be good. But anyway, it's a way. It's a way to uh, you. We we usually raise about four or five thousand dollars for uh, scholarships every year through this. I think if we, you know, up the ante with some uh, sponsors, that will take care of. A lot of things, but um, yeah, I just think it's Simon with the chip chips on people. We won't have to be tearing off tags and everything at the end. I don't think so. That'll eliminate that issue. So, yeah. but I mean, we usually have about thirty-five or forty Rotarians on street corners throughout the city and at the start-finish line. So that would be the big key if we don't have that many people willing to uh, spend a little bit of time on. Um, July 4th in the morning when there's probably just the carving and maybe a couple other things going on in town, then um, that's going to be dependent on that. So, so I just like to, anybody that has a comment, yes or no, or uh, I'd like to hear everybody's opinion if we could. Well, Brock in the uh, chat going on here, I'm seeing an overwhelming amount of support. Uh, everybody wants to do it. I have nothing negative yet. If you have any questions, please speak up now. Is, for the reasons we can't do Lago Rodeo, does this fall in the same category or is the mayor okay with all this? 
Well, I did, uh, I did send an email to uh, Mayor Johnson and she seemed uh, to be supportive about uh, this, although we probably do need to get the city approval to uh, close the streets down because we're gonna, we always just follow what the parade does. And so the city's gonna have to have some approval in regards to that. But I think the, the, the you know, the parade's a different ball game with congregation of people. I mean, we still have people coming out and watch the foot race, but it's, they're also, uh, you know, gathering in town to watch the parade that usually uh, starts right when the foot race ends. So. Um, you know, I don't think we're going to get the crowds like the parade, but we'll have some, but we'll, we'll try to get them spread out as soon as, as much as we can. Yeah. And, and the other thing, and, and I have a list of, uh, of changes that will be, that we'll submit to, um, Mayor Johnson and, and probably the health department to make sure that, I mean, we don't want it to be risky in any way, shape or form for the participants or the uh, people that are, you know, helping guide the runners and that sort of thing. I think we can make it so there's, you know, the, the six feet of dif distance should be not a problem in almost all situations, including at registration when you pick up your t-shirts and that sort of thing. Um, so uh, certainly we will want to follow every guideline that we can. It's probably going to be a little bit dependent if we go back to, um, you know, phase two or phase, you know, phase one would be really bad news. But hopefully by July, we'll start seeing, I mean, my hope is that we'll start seeing a little bit of return to normalcy. Um, then, you know, we may have to make a, even spread them out further, but, you know, if you're running in, in little, uh, you know, by yourself or in small groups, we can, we can, we can have them, when you're running, you're not actually, you know, it, it doesn't have to be where you're really tightly packed is all. So I think we can do it. Well, I, I say go for it. You know, if we can get approval from the city, uh, if the mayor's okay with it and the health department's okay with it, I think we will be able to round up the Rotarians necessary to, uh, to get it done. I really do. So, okay. good work, guys. We look forward to it and uh, hearing what's going to happen. Yeah, we'll probably want to get some volunteers to, well, Brock and I will try and divvy it up, but we may want some sponsor help. Finding sponsors would be great for this year, especially because it's, you know, it's not going to pull in the money that it normally does. Mm -hmm. um, still need to buy the t-shirts and the tags and that sort of thing, which is not, not that expensive. Um, we'll keep the price the same as last year. Um, the, like I said, we probably dropped the, there's no reason to run um, the announcements or to, to do offer the prizes. So I think economically, you know, it's, it'll still, if it breaks even, that's fantastic. You know, I think it'll probably turn a little bit of money. Um, but it, we may want to uh, see if somebody could get, or, you know, everybody should feel free to go out and uh, solicit sponsorships. And then we'll also probably need some help maybe with the t-shirt design or that sort of thing. But Brock and I will figure out some of that. Okay. Yeah, why don't you guys uh, nail it down a little bit and then send out an email to the whole club and see what happens. And right. Just pushing it. Okay. Good. Thank Great. you. Thanks everybody. Becky Screenly, do you want to say anything about the Helping Hands Food Bank fundraiser? Yes, thank you. Um, this week is the last week for any early bird um, ticket sales. So if you want to go and you want to save a little money, uh, now is the time for the virtual. I think all the other one, the early birds for the other categories are sold, but all the virtuals are still available until um, May 1st. So the next couple of days. Um, that's all I got so far. Okay. How, uh, do you still need sponsors or are you oh. completely sponsored out? Yeah. Can you ever be sponsored out? Um, <laughs> I, thought I'd, I thought I'd ask. <laughs> um, yes, we're still accepting sponsors up till May 9th because the program is going to be worked on May 10th. And so, yes, if you'd like to sponsor, let me know. And, um, I think we only have a couple yeah. more VIP of the elite VIPs left. So if you wanted to do that, please jump on that soon. And sponsorship levels were from like 250 or $500 on up, correct? Correct. There you go. So if you have an interest in uh, sponsoring, please get a hold of Becky. Christina Trader, tell us about the Marysville auction and what's going on over at Boys and Girls Club. 
Uh, let's see, Marysville Rotary, Marysville Noon Rotary, the other most awesome club in the state, is having a auction that's virtual currently. Um, it ends tomorrow at 10. Um, I can put the link in the chat box if you're interested in going and seeing the items. Um, there's quite a bit, and they keep adding things. I'm not on the auction committee this year, so there's a lot going on. Um, but we are doing our live event tomorrow uh, via Twitch and Facebook, and I can send that information out to you, Mike, so you can forward it onto the club for anybody who might be interested. I will do that. Um, as for the club, uh, we're hiring um, in Skagit County like 40 positions by July 6th. Um, we need to fill for all of our sites that we're starting and running this summer. Um, and so we are job posting on Indeed, our club website, the Facebook page. You know of any high school seniors that are graduating that are interested in a summer job um, and want to work with some kiddos, send them our way. We're really excited. Um, and then there's also the child care survey that's still being run for Cedar Woolley Club to uh, anticipate need of child care within the city as well as a community survey um, for that. And then also just as a fun, exciting, the Cedar Woolley Boys and Girls Club just got solar panels installed. Um, and so the kids are learning how to be green and learn solar energy and all sorts of fun stuff. Great. Great. Well, Christina, good luck with the, the hiring is, you know, all of us that are employers know it's, it's tough right now to find anybody. So I, please, if you know somebody looking for a summer job, send them Christina's way. Finally, I think Mr. Johnston had something he wanted to say. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Um, a quick impromptu request announcement, because I believe Daryl Skiles is not on the line. So if you are, Daryl, just close your ears and walk away from the, the, the camera. We uh, would like to honor Daryl at the installation this year for his 50 years of service to Rotary. I will be sending out an email in the next week or so um, requesting that everybody in the club send me a 10 minute, 10 minute, oh God, please not 10 minutes, a 10 second clip of a thank you, well wishes to Daryl. Um, you can be creative with it. We just, we can't have stories because, you know, we got a hundred members and I'd love to see a hundred clips or maybe a couple of clips, you know, partnered up with somebody. Um, you know, and a special request to all you Rotarians that have known Daryl for um, a good long time. I think that these are really super meaningful. I've seen them uh, being done in a number of times and and something he can take away with away with him after the meeting and and kind of have memories and of, of all the folks that are in Rotary with them. So uh, I'll be sending that out just 10 seconds. Just get on your phone, you know, do a vi quick video, send it to me. It should be pretty simple. We'll put it all together. And I think this will be a really, we're going to do some other stuff for him, but I think this will be something, like I said, that he can have um, once all is said and done. Thank you. Great. Okay. Thanks, Chris. Uh, Chris is heading this up and it'll be great, I'm sure. Any other announcements? Well, then let's move on to Happy Box. Anybody happy? I'm happy. Joan's happy. Yeah, I'd like to do a happy 20. And the first 10 is because um, we have a new little friend named Edwin from the Adopt a Dream Rotary International Project. And the second half is because Teak, who's on his way to Honduras right now, took our family letters and um, Edwin's birthday is in June and he's going to make it special for him from us. So I'm just very grateful for Teak. That's wonderful. Yeah, I had forgotten that Teak uh, was leaving. So yeah. Anybody else? Well, I'm happy. I'm going to go ahead, David. You go ahead. Oh, um. So I'm happy. Uh, tomorrow night, I am going to be announcing the Cedro Woolley High School road, or, um, homecoming royalty uh, after the parade that's going on. Uh, I, I've been doing this for a few years, and it falls in line with uh, what's going on here at Country Meadow Village because uh, next week, I don't know if you can see that, that is Mary Armstrong, and she's a member of the class of 1938, and she turns 100 next week. 
We're celebrating all month of May for Mary Armstrong, uh, the Seagro Woolley High School alumni. I won't be here next Thursday because I'll be traveling to Pullman to celebrate my nephew's um, graduation from Washington State University and remembering my 40th uh, year since I graduated in 1981. Uh, my aunt Benita was the treasurer of the new dormitory in 1927, which turned into Duncan Dunn. So I found her picture in the 1927 uh, Chinook, and we're gonna, I'm putting together some fun memories of uh, that for, for Blake's party. So it's really a crazy, crazy time, and uh, so excited for Blake and, and the legacy that, that he's carrying on. So I'm happy. You're happy. That's great. Hey, David. Well, it's, it's, um, is Mary Armstrong, was she a teacher? She was a teacher. Yes, she taught at Tigerley High School for many, many years from Clear Lake, uh, an active uh, uh, charter member of the Clear Lake Alumni or uh, um, Historical Association. I've gotten a lot of great, great history from Deanna Ammons about her. Yeah, she, uh, she was a great lady. I remember her and where she lived in Clear Lake. So, um, and she, she, I teach chair chi three times a week, and Mary is an active participant of my chair chi class. Very good, thank cool. you. Uh, well, I'll pass on my congratulations to Blake. It's hard to believe that you know four years ago he was graduating from high school, and uh, uh, it's crazy. well, of course, you know, it's hard to believe forty years ago you were graduating from college, David. But we won't go there. So. I'm going to throw in some happy bucks on Venmo there because, uh, well, next week I will be uh, doing this meeting from Reno. Uh, I'm traveling to Reno on Wednesday to celebrate my granddaughter's first birthday. And that's hard to believe. Um, our, our Cinco de Mayo, born in the year of Corona, on a Taco Tuesday baby, will turn one next Wednesday. So we'll be down in Reno for the weekend. So I'm happy for that. Anybody else happy? Okay, well, that's all we got. Uh, what we can do, I don't know. For those that want to stick around for a few minutes, I can go out and walk through Club Runner a little bit. Uh, for some of the new members that don't know how it all works, uh, we can talk about that a little bit. I, I'm, I'm not too keen or I'm not too great on this screen sharing thing, so I'll try to figure it out. It, if you can't see something, please yell at me. So. Uh, if you want to drop off the meeting now, that's great. Uh, Paula stole my quote or thought of the day. My thought of the day was from Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Also, uh, the time is always right to do what is right. So there you go. But uh, for those of you sticking on, let me try to share the screen. And please, somebody speak up if you can't see what I'm doing. Whoa, that's not what I wanted. Okay, the easiest way to get out to Club Runner, if you don't have a link on your screen, is to simply Google Cedar Woolley Rotary Club Runner, and it'll take you out to this link. Once you click on that link, it will direct you immediately to the home page of Cedar Woolley Rotary. Up in the upper right-hand screen is the member login. Your member login now, uh, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, I believe it's a, a you just start out with your, your email and then they will ask for a user ID and you give them a password. Is that right, Becky? Sounds right. Okay, so you'd start out, if you, if you haven't got a login name, you would enter your email uh, and then it would prompt you for all that stuff. So once you're here, you just go out there and sign in. Now the other note is, I can't type. The other note is that your login credentials for Club Runner apply to the Cedar Woolley website and they also apply to the District 5050 website. So it's the same information. Out here, this is our homepage. Uh, it's just got information about things we're doing, who are the officers are, when we meet, that kind of stuff, as well as stories about what's going on within the club. The thing I want to talk about is the email function uh, because there's a lot of people that don't even know this exists. 
So if you go up to the upper right hand corner, there's an area called member area. You click on that. And sometimes it's pretty slow, but uh, it'll bring this up. Out here, you have all kinds of options of things you can do. This button right here, edit my profile, this is where you would go out and change your address, where you would uh, basically, well, let's just take a look, see what it brings up. And this is what I'm talking about being slow, okay. It's got your picture, all your personal information, uh, it talks about rotary things. You, you have the option of going out and writing a biography. It talks about commitments you have and settings and that kind of thing. So that's where you change this information. You have the bottom down here where you can edit. Going back, let's talk about, you can check your attendance. This shows your year-to-date attendance. Uh, you can actually check past years. These are bulletins from the club. Uh, if we put the bulletin out, it'll appear here also. Something else to know is this directory function right here. If you're trying to look somebody up, you can click on this button and it'll take you out there and every member in the club, their email, their phone number, everything is right here. So you can actually print this also. But the big thing is down here, email services. This is where you can write an email to an individual, to the whole club, uh, to certain committees, whatever you want. This is just my email history here. This is talking about you can make uh, custom distribution lists, uh, create templates. The easiest way to do it is compose a new message. And when you get out here, assuming it's going to go out there, If you look over here on the left side, step one, uh, select the recipients. Active and honorary members, you can collect the whole group, or if you want, you can hit the plus button and expand, and it'll show you every club member. You can, from here, select one, two, five, whatever you want, if you want to go out and do it. The one, two, three, four down at the bottom, it's just, you know, the next page would be from H to L or something, so on and so forth. Uh, other users, uh, there's nothing there. Inactive members, you could go out and look at X members, uh, people that were in the club in the past, if you wanted to send them an email. Club executives and directors for the current year. This is not just our club executives and directors. This is for the whole district, I believe. The other big one though is custom distribution list. So if you go out here, somebody at some point has created a distribution list. I've done a lot of these, uh, board members, team captains, that kind of thing. This is where you can just create a list that has a specific group of people. So if you have a committee, this is where you would create a scholarship committee list or a membership committee list and be able to send that email specifically. And from there, it is pretty much just a standard template that you go out and fill in. You put your message in here, down below, you can upload files, uh, you can send a list of the recipients, you can copy yourself on this email, and you can even schedule that email. Uh, if you wanna write it and send it on Saturday because you're gonna be out of town, you can do that right here. Okay. Any quick questions on email? I mean, it's pretty straightforward. The big key is you have to get your user ID created. If you have any problems with that, you can call me and call Becky or you can call Christine and they'll get it set up for you. My belief is it's whatever email we use in our club directory is the email that you sign on to initially. Okay. Moving over to the District 5050 website. Again, it is the same login information that you would use. There are a multitude of things. On the left-hand side, it always talks about upcoming events, training sessions, uh, conferences, things like that. As you can see, the district conference is being promoted right here. This is where you will actually, you will click on this to get out to register. Probably where the button says click here. 
Uh, and then if you just scroll down the page, there's all kinds of things going on. There's videos, uh, the past Peace Arts journals. There will be articles about clubs on this page also. Uh, if you go back up to the top, there's all kinds of things you can do up here. If you get over to the public image, where is it? You know, they've got, stay there, Rotary Graphics. If you're creating a newsletter, you can go out here and you can find the guidelines for creating your document. They've got the Rotary uh, Color Palette, JPEG files with Rotary, the Rotary wheel, uh, and, and ones that are customizable that you can go out and change, put Cedar Willie Rotary in. Cedar Willie Rotary is doing this kind of stuff. Uh, and it talks about all the different committees also. And this just the easiest way to find out about these things is really to just go out and wander around on the website and try to figure out what's there. That's the quickest way to learn. Uh, and the final thing I wanted to show everybody was this is myrotary.org. And you'll have to go out and create a separate user ID for this. But this is where a lot of Rotary Internet, well, this is the Rotary International website. And again, they're going to have all kinds of information about upcoming events. Uh, it talks about the Rotary Foundation. There's training sessions, uh, news and media. If you go down in here, they've got different videos you can watch. Whoops, lost it. The Brand Center that talks about they're having a problem with their website. At any rate, you can go out here and you can explore all of this. And I highly encourage you to do that. Uh, that's really all I was going to say. Becky, do you have anything you want to add to this? No, but I think this is great information for the club. And I remember um, years ago, we had a little program like this on your iPhone. So you have this information with you all the time on your phone. And it works the same, but like when I'm traveling and I need to find a Rotarian, I can easily do that through Club Runner and it's just amazing. Yeah, and there actually is still a Rotary app. If you just go to the Google Play Store and search Rotary, uh, Club Runner is still out there. And, and it's limited in what it can do, but it can always provide you with a directory. So. Again, go out to, to Google Play Store, look up Club Runner, and you can get that app for your phone. And then you'll just enter the same information as you do on the other one. Do any of you have any questions? I mean, I know I, this, and I apologize, this was probably not a great session here, but uh, I, this is kind of very, very last minute. No, it's great. Thank you, Mike. Okay. Well, that's, that's all I've got for today. Uh, everybody take care. Have a great week. And we'll see you all soon. Thank you, Mike. Bye. Yeah. See ya.